Hello, it's Lizzie here from Lizzie Curtis Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make Austin and Austin is this fabulous bag that's been made by our Kath and has been um, kind of rejuvenated by her as well from an existing old pattern that really doesn't get much light of day now so we decided to revamp it um, and relaunch it as a fresh brand new pattern for you all and Austin is a really super sized bag. Um, it has the flap over with magnetic clasps here, so it's secure, if that was always a worry to you, which I know it is for some. Uh, we've now got a zipped front pocket here, which you can put your, maybe your mobile phone in or something where you need to grab something quickly. Maybe it's a ticket, maybe it's a little bit of cash in there, um, just so you can grab it quickly. And on the back, we have a lovely sort of dip in there pocket, which um, if you were wearing this, because this would go over your shoulder, that would be close to you. So you could put a valuable in there if you needed something, you know, to get something really quickly. But it's very, very handy and it's a really lovely make. And you see, it's got the fabulous uh, contrasting binding going across the top. And actually that's from the lining. So I've got a little trick to show you when we come to that part. So Austin is just a really lovely, super duper bag. And I think I'm going to see see lots of these in my members group and I'm, I think I might even see lots of these um, from when we launch it in the shop on the 1st of September. So um, I'm looking very much forward to seeing people's adaptations of this because everybody treats it as their own obviously and they might put a little twist on things which is always nice to see. Um, the whole thing has been quilted. It's made with one piece of fabric going from the front all the way up to the well for the front <laughs> actually let me just open this up again so um this would be almost like the bottom you'll see when i start to make it i'm going to get myself in a muddle if i'm not careful but it goes from here all the way around to here so actually non-directional fabric for this would be perfect unless you don't mind things upside down as you start to loop it round if you like You've also got the, the self-fabriced belts, um, straps here, which again go all the way around, very reminiscent of the laptop bag, which is, this is what um, has inspired this design. So, like I say, our lovely Kath put this together for us. She's also written the pattern. I'm just here basking in her glory of making this pattern up for us and I and I absolutely love it. So um, I'm going to use a slightly different fabric of course, slight twist to it so that'll be interesting to see how that works out. So I'm going to pop Austin behind me. Um, if you look here this is the second pattern hit now for August and this one is called Aubrecia. Again that theme of purples and mauves coming through and uh, it looks fabulous doesn't it and that is fabric weaving um, inspired um, by Mr domestic if you follow him on youtube and instagram you'll know exactly who i mean and exactly uh, about this weaving technique um, i've just readapted that again to make it into a cushion with a flange and also a zipped back so we've made the pattern from that inspiration and i absolutely love it and in my members group i will be demonstrating this live on our thursday night chats to show you how to do that weaving um, it really is quite magical um, it's only when you put that third colour in, the light colour, does it all come to life and you can see the tumbling blocks. I just think it's incredible really. Um, and many, many thanks to all those that have inspired me to make it. So let's put Austin in the back, uh, on the back shelf there. So you can admire her from a distance and we'll crack on with making um, the the, the bag up. Now this is the pattern that you'll see. The, the front cover will be slightly different. We're just revamping a nice picture to go on the front there so you'll see something different. Um, and everything you need is in there. There's full written and pictorial instructions in there to help you make the project. So the, the pattern is I think crucial. Keep it in your library and um, download it, save it and uh, refer to it from time to time when you need to make something glorious like Austin. So if we look on the overhead, we can see the, the fabric that I've chosen. And actually, I need to get more of this because I am making a massive applique uh, quilt using the new Anna Maria Horner um, fabrics. And I had to commandeer this one <laughs> to help me make um, Austin. So you can see what I've done here. I've already uh, quilted my big piece. Now let me just pop my magnetic closures out of the way. So I've 
quilted that now um it kind of this kind of is directional but you if you look closely the flowers are going the correct way on that strip and the next one is upside down which brings me joy because it it makes it non-directional in a way i couldn't do it sideways but obviously up and down is great so this follows the selvage um, um in the requirements kath has said one meter and it's definitely one meter that you need because of the size of the piece of fabric you need to cut so i've quilted this and i've rounded off the corners um, you'll, you'll see in the pattern what Kath has used to round off the corners um, just to make that lovely front flap look really gorgeous um, so that's already been done so the quilting has been done you can see that's that's been done and um, all ready to go with the actual top bag itself so although I've jumped ahead a little bit to stop this video being three hours long um, it's quite easy to see from this and from the pattern um, how um, that's been created it's lovely and obviously it's a huge piece so uh, good job we've got a nice big overhead view today because otherwise I'll run out of space okay so we'll, we'll put that to one side because I kind of jumped ahead in the pattern by doing that but I thought it was important that you should see um, the first thing we need to do is um, let me just refer to the pattern because I do I do really want to follow this as best I can um, is that we make up the the strap now initially you cut four pieces of a certain length certain width um, and you join all four pieces together to create one big loop so if i was to try and get all that in shot there we go <laughs> you've got a bit of a snake going on there um, and it's interfaced with a soft interfacing so you don't want anything too stiff because it's going to go over your shoulder perhaps so you want it fairly soft but we are you're making one big loop okay so you're cutting four pieces as per the pattern you're joining all four pieces together on the short ends and you're making a great big long um, loop you're then attaching your interfacing let me just open that up so you can see so you're attaching your interfacing and then the, and you can see look, I, that's interesting i'm glad i opened it that i just overlap mine just by about I don't know half a centimeter quarter of an inch um, just to make sure that it's well and truly um, uh, adhered there and also it's interfaced well we don't want a gap because that might kink your uh, strap um, and then all you're doing is bringing the long edges into the center and then you're folding again and obviously we're top stitching around both long sides so although you definitely would be stitching these two um, edges together you actually do the folded edge as well just to just to neaten it up and make it look gorgeous um, again I've used that non-directional fabric and you'll notice that if as I'm spinning it around the flowers appear in all sorts of different places now I would say uh, unless you're willing to waste a huge amount of fabric I would just go with what your fabric is doing and just accept the fact that you'll have some flowers or whatever right in the center of your strap and set some maybe off center by the time you stitch this on you're not going to notice any of that so so please don't waste fabric by trying to pattern match um, I would just go for it and enjoy the process so we, that's the first thing we're going to do is stitch that up but if we come to this is my lining it's a gold fleck so I'll put that to one side so when it comes to the pockets the first pocket we're going to create in a second is the back pocket now again um, the lining becomes the binding so the pocket lining is bigger than the outer which you can see makes total sense there um, and it just pops over the edge to make a lovely binding and instead of using my cream I've used a turquoise just to enhance the the, the colors of the design of the fabric and then the front pocket is fairly self-explanatory um, just regular fabric regular lining I'm happy with that I've got a zip there and actually all I could find in my stash was this pretty 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 decorative zip but I'm just going to treat it like an, a regular zip so don't expect me to put this in like a like 
the zip it is which is a decorative one I'm going to just forget that it's decorative and then in the pattern it says to use a lovely piece of binding on the top there we'll get to it eventually but actually I found this in my stash which is a gorgeous piece of embroidered trim I think it's an Indian trim it's so beautiful and you know what I couldn't have matched that any better so I am I'm going to use this because I'm going to use my Austin all the time it's beautiful it's such a great size everything about it is perfect so we'll come to all these bits as we go along but let's let's follow the pattern so the first thing we're going to do as I said we're going to stitch the strap so if I bring my machine in and all we're going to do is go all the way around now I would suggest you put your stitch length up to three um, start anywhere I mean there's you're going to you could start at a seam if you want to I mean let's find one just just so we we doing what I'm saying start at a seam um, and then we're going to stitch all the way around which will take you a couple of minutes to do so I'll start it and then come back to me when I've completed it Okay, I've gone all the way around, just trimming off my threads, and there we are, we've got one long loop, which is super. So I'm just going to keep it nice and straight by wrapping it around my hand and popping it to one side, ready for later. There we go. You can put a clip in it to hold it. You've got a big, big clips, giant clips, they're super. Oh, it just goes on. There we go. So lovely, my roll of strap. So if we go to then the overhead again and we're going to stitch our uh, back pocket, what I've got is my lining here and my outer and they're going to be put together, right sides together. Let's, let's be good and pop a pin in. Now you pin and use your clips if you want to. Um, whatever um, whatever you you like to do you know, some people like to use their clips some t some people like to use their their pins I'm not a great pin fan but sometimes you know especially if you've got nice pins like mine okay so we've we've joined the short seams together ready for stitching and you'll notice as I said the lining is bigger so it's gonna it's not gonna sit flat at all it's just gonna do its own thing but we're gonna stitch from there to there and I shall get my iron on ready because we we'll need to press it in a sec. So let's do those short seams. I think we're going to see lots of these. I think I said that before, but um, this is going to be one of those incredibly useful stitch length down to 2.4. One of those really useful bags that you're going to always have beside you. Um, I'm thinking you can use it, to be honest, I would really like to use it for my my applique project, my big, big quilt that I'm doing. I, I must admit, I, I haven't started it yet. Uh, I've got the freezer paper, I've got the fabrics, bar this one. Um, yeah, so I'm, I will get going on it and I'll, I'll post pictures as I go. It's a huge, huge project. I think, uh, and like I said, I'm gonna use Austin, I think, to put all my, my paraphernalia in from that project so yeah it's going to be my project bag I'm trying to think of the lady whose quilt it is that I'm making is it a Kim I'll have to find out right so if we look at the overhead now we will see our lovely pocket come to life and on the bottom edge you're going to um, set your seam if you need to if you want to some some people do some people don't um, but you just want to fold that out so it's nice and straight I just lick my fingers out and do apologize but I'm sure you do the same secretly um, and as this is going to be for me then why not um, so the bottom edge is is lovely and pressed flat and um, with no overhang at all it's just exactly how it should be that is such delicious fabric I can't even tell you and then on the top uh, again you've got that seam so obviously you might want to press that seam a certain way I think it naturally wants to go that way but you might want to have it go that way it's whatever um, the fabric tells you sometimes which way it wants to go 
um, and then give that a press and that is your back pocket done I'm just going to switch my iron down a little bit that is your back pocket done basically we're not stitching this at all at the moment that comes a little bit later so let's pop that to one side and let's do the front pocket so here we go we've got my my little decorative zip let's take my ironing mat away and we've got the the front pocket pieces now you've got a slightly longer edge than down here um, than the let's let me let me say that again it's not a square it's a rectangle so it's the long edges that are going to be your sides and it's the short edges top and bottom that is your where your zips going to go and where your seam will go here so if we look at the pattern just make sure I'm following the pattern the first thing we need to do is make a, a zip sandwich so that's pretty normal I'm going to keep my black thread in I think that would be a best the best idea um, and I'm going to do right sides together with my zip there so right sides together I'm going to treat it ex if it was just an ordinary zip and I'm hoping that I go over the holes of my decorative piece we shall see but I'm, I'm more than happy to do that um, and then I'm going to put my lovely line over the top and again you might want to pin um, the best piece of advice I can give you is to make sure that your side seams here are sitting um, directly parallel with each other they're both sitting on top you don't want your lining sticking out um, at the side from your outer you want them both to be parallel so I think what I'm going to do is just do that rather than going across and then because we, we're, we're stitching a zip in I'm just going to flip it over because I like to stitch on the zip teeth side so having said all of that I am now going to adjust it and I'm going to stitch all the way along there to make a nice neat zip sandwich and if you're never sure at this stage just open it up and look at it and think actually when that's stitched that will look right it, the, the zip teeth are showing to the outside of my fabric so if you're not sure just just check and make sure that you can see your zip teeth and the right side of your your fabrics and then you're good to go it's a good little tip so let's pop that under the machine now I've got my little zipper foot that comes with the Juki and it really isn't, um, f wouldn't, it's not really friendly for this, this project I'll be honest with you because it stitches a little bit away from the teeth so um, I'm just going to accept whatever happens is right and we're going all the way across just making sure that everything stays in place and obviously you can keep using your pins I'll just do a little back stitch there and if we look again there we are there's our seam stitched you can see it on the back looks really neat and then if I flip it over there we go you can see you know what I can get away with that that's absolutely fine it was the, the it was the best color zip that I had in my stash so you don't have to go and buy new stuff just use what's in your stash so let's just have a quick look it says turn through press and top stitch okay uh, oh it says with right side still together stitch along the bottom edge of the pocket so we need to put this back together again so let's turn it through and we're going to stitch along this short edge here and then we're going to turn through and press it oh, this is so easy Kath thank you so much love it it just shows I mean I've I've read the pattern it's always good to read a pattern all the way through but you need to follow it again just to make sure that you are completing all the steps that you need to complete <laughs> And then because with the sides are open we can just turn it through so we're going to do exactly what we just did with the back pocket and that's just get that bottom seam beautifully straight and flat um, and don't forget you can set that seam because that really does help and we'll just give that a press so we've got our lovely bottom edge beautifully pressed now there we go 
beautiful and then we'll just adjust the zip and we'll give that a press as well and obviously you can top stitch that if you want to I'm going to sneaky look at Kath's uh, yeah she top stitched so I'm going to top stitch mine <laughs> so I'm going to pop that under the machine and top stitch that now it does make a difference because it keeps the lining in the right place and I must admit I can't see any holes obviously if you've got a decorative zip you, you, you want to use it as a decorative zip um, but this is this is working out perfectly for me so I'm going to move my zip slider along let's have a look at the overhead it's always good if you've got a zip on a roll to make your zips much much longer than you need to just to allow for any idiosyncrasies let's just say of putting a zip in um, and then you just want to bring your edges together and we'll just snip that as well and then of course if you want to you can pop that under the machine and you could just make sure that those um, ends stay stitched um, closed sorry stitch over the ends to make sure that that zip teeth stays nice and closed so yeah really happy with that so the next stage in the pattern is to do the quilting so if I just flip through that and you'll see that on um, on the pattern and if we bring the bag in on the overhead you'll be able to see again uh, what I've done so that's uh, that's the whole piece so it's one big piece one big piece um, and all we've done is rounded off the corners which will be the corners at the front so this is the front flap and uh, that's been rounded off so we've done the quilting and we've rounded off the corners so the next thing we're going to do is to um, put our front pocket on so what we need to do is find the center so our front pocket goes on this part here so if we let me just bring that down so there's our curve to it that's the flap but the front pocket must sit on this part here okay so we need to find the center well I know where the center is because I started quilting from the center so I could pop a pin in there and I know that that line is my center line now from the instructions we just need to draw a straight line a certain measurement down so let's get my ruler in oops and because it's a because it's a, a black um, fabric I'll get my teeth in in a minute because it's a black fabric uh, oh I've got my lovely chalk pen here I'm going to use a chalk pen <laughs> so let's just measure down from the top oh we we're just there we we're just there so let me just adjust that let me do that again so I've got my measurement so now I'm just going to draw a straight line and because it's a chalk pen we know that that's just going to come off so let's draw a nice straight line so you, um, maybe you're not going to see that but there's a chalk line going all the way down there put my ruler to one side um, and then what we're going to do is place the pocket centrally on the on the quilted line um, each side of the pocket will extend over a third of the quilt and the bottom of the pocket needs to be half an inch up from the drawn line Ooh, so <laughs> there's my drawn line okay we need to find the center of the pocket well we can do that very easily by just folding in half we can get a pin in there if we wanted to just to give our center line there we go pop it back on there we know that that quilt line that we did is on the center so I'm happy with that and according to Kath I just pop it on there half an inch and I'll get my nice sharp pins to put this on half an inch from that line so let's do that now we've used double wadding here so we've used two layers of 80 20 and it really makes it quite sturdy it's not like bows or foam where it's really very structural it's soft 
but it's got structure so it, it really does um, feel really nice and substantial but be aware if your machine can handle that sort of um, width depth of, of wadding especially at the sides here I have trimmed mine back a little bit so I I've trimmed mine back a quarter of an inch um, Kath doesn't say that in the pattern but that's something that you could do and you could even take one of these layers back as well um, even more so um, and then use some spray adhesive just to hold that together before you stitch. So there is our uh, pocket positioned nicely and I'm going to put a pin in the top there just to hold that in place. In fact I'm just going to do a couple more just so I'm really happy with the placement because we want it to be nice and straight. So let's do that. So that's on. Um, and then we're going to put our binding straight across there to hold all the layers together. So we're not going to stitch through all of it. We're only going to stitch through that part of it. And of course, I'm a, I've got my absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous binding, which is going to go here. Now, our straps will come down here and cover all of our workings. So um, I'm happy, although this is deeper than perhaps um, Kath has said in the pattern, I'm happy to use this and I can just bring my, my the edge of my straps up, up to here if I wanted to, just to cover the edges of that. Um, so if I just move that along a bit I'm going to straighten that edge up I was so lucky finding this in my stash we have things that we forget about don't we or I think this is something that I might have inherited <laughs> I'm popping a pin in there just to hold it and I'm going to stitch it right across on the bottom edge and the top edge just to secure it and I'm just going to cut it there. Oh, it just looks, I nearly put that in the bin. Be still my beating heart. <laughs> so I'm going to stitch along here to secure it. I'm going to still stick with my black. Um, obviously, if you're doing this at home and you're using something as glorious as this, then you might want to change it to the, perhaps the pink thread or the turquoise thread. But you know, time is never on my side. So we're going to stitch this down top and bottom, okay? and uh, and see how the machine takes it let's let's do it i haven't done this before so i don't know if that's going to work but i reckon it will now the only thing i need to do is to make sure i don't go too near the teeth of the zip so it's kind of in some ways i'm compromising a little bit by using this beautiful binding but i think i can get away with it we shall see <laughs> Because I'm using a decorative zip, I, I, I really want to cover the holes up so it doesn't look like a decorative zip. Otherwise somebody will say, oh, it's a shame you covered that up. No, <laughs> it's the only one I had. So it's perfect. So as I'm coming up to my zip slide, I'm just lifting up my foot, just moving that zip back. There we go, let's bring it in a little bit. And I'm just following the teeth along and of course don't forget to um, bring your teeth together and that's not that's not, not like the dentist talking to you <laughs> just thinking about I had dental work the other day he kept saying bite and rub tap 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 dentist okay so I've stopped because I want to just trim that edge a bit more and now I'm going to stitch the top edge of my binding. Now in the pattern, Kath tells you exactly what size binding you need to use for the project that's in the pattern, the one that um, she's designed, obviously, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I've gone a bit rogue, but she does say to top stitch that binding, top and bottom, so I'm, I'm okay. I, I, I don't think she'll be cross with me. Oh just looks lovely I must admit I'd have preferred a turquoise thread I'm not going to lie but I think I can get away with that what do you think from the front <sighs> delicious okay so I can take all my pins out now or better stitch the bottom of the pocket let's have a look uh, base the size of the pocket of the bag and top stitch the bottom or oh, we can do that it's lovely when you follow somebody else's pattern so I'm going all the way down the sides
and if you need to use a walking foot now because you're using lots of layers two layers of wadding one layer of fabric and then you've got the two layers of your pocket there's no interfacing in your pocket so that helps with the bulk so let's just move all that through the machine now we're going across the bottom of our pocket and basting up the other side now don't forget those sides are raw edges okay don't forget they're raw edges so all the way up to the top and take my pins out now super so now we have attached can hardly see it i don't know if the stripes match didn't check that but isn't it lovely and we've got our pocket here so i've got i can put all my goodies in there i think it looks splendid so easy to do thank you so much so let me just make sure that's out of the way ready for when we're stitching our straps so let's have a look at the um we've done that bit we've done that bit so um, turn the bag around and place the back pocket a half an inch away from the drawn line on the on the on the back right got it so if we look at the bag again we'll do on, on the overhead so this is our chalk line you may not be able to see it it's one of those things where because of the fabric difficult to see but there's a chalk line there and according to Kath we need to place our back pocket a half an inch away from that again and obviously you want to try and line things up as it happens that's the fold line of the bag so you're not going to see whether really that that's lined up with that but obviously you want it to be so just keep your eye on that and make sure that it's all sitting um, nice and straight if you can and uh, you can be forgiven if you find it all too difficult but I'm pinning this flat it's always good to do that if you can if you've got the sort of surface that you can pin without uh, you know if you're using your best wooden dining room table I suggest you don't do that but if you lift it up it can distort it so try and keep it flat and then I would imagine we are basting all the way around here um, have a look da, da, da. top seal and water and base the sides yeah so we're going to go from here all the way down across there and up and don't forget we've got raw edges this side and this side so that's our two pockets almost done let's pop it under again i would suggest that you use a walking foot obviously you know that the raw edges are going to be um, covered with the straps if you didn't know you know now let's go along the bottom and then up the other side so it's We've done one side, we've gone along the bottom, and now we're going up the other side. And um, one of the reasons why I called it Austin, first of all, I quite like the name. <laughs> and secondly, I think actually this would make a good, good bag for a man. So I thought I'd sort of, it's kind of like a generic name really. So that's why it was called Austin. Okay, so let's have a look at the pattern. So we've got our pockets on, so I'm really happy with that. So we've got one top and bottom. So if I put my hand in there, there's one and there's the other one. And that one is the back and this one is the front. Great, so now we're going to put our straps on. So if I look at the pattern here. Okay, so now we're going to put the strap on. So I've got my coiled bit of strappage 
and if you find one of the seams that you've created with those four pieces and um, pop that seam uh, where the chalk line is so if you remember we've got that chalk line that sits between the bottom of both pockets and if you put one of those seams um, on top of that chalk line and you're also covering the edges of your pocket and I would say that sits right in the centre so I'm just going to get my big pins to go through that so one seam is sitting here might want to zoom in on this so we can see there's our chalk line and there's our seam so now you need to find the other seam so this is the opposite one so make sure you've got your straps in place in the right place oops that gets rid of these bits of uh, threads there right so this one goes over the top of there here again it goes that seam goes right in the center of your chalk line and it covers both of those raw edges of your pocket and again we might want to zoom in there just to have a little look at that and then pop a pin in through all those layers there's quite a lot of layers going on so there we are so there is our two seams in place just make sure that when you pop those down that your straps are not twisted in any way I think we're okay so you've got equal parts of the straps now going either side of your bag so if I move this up a little bit you can see I move the machine out of the way you can see how that looks so we've got our seams over the top of our chalk marks there we sh so we should have one seam up the top here and then we're just laying that down across of the raw edges of our pockets now because um, it, what in the instructions you're going to take the stitching of your pockets well I'll show you in a sec just up to the top of the binding now because I've gone a little bit rogue here and my binding is, is that bit bigger I'm actually going to stick to the plan and I'm going to only stitch to here because we've got magnetic closures to go in and I don't want to uh, sort of spoil the effect of my where I'm stitching my straps to so stick with the plan there's a reason why I'm saying this because your flap comes down and tucks into here so you if any higher and that's not going to fit so so stick to the plan of the pattern it's very important that you do that and you're only going to stitch to here where my pin is if I just move that you're going to stitch um, all the way up to there and the same obviously on the other side so make sure that your strap covers halfway between your uh, raw edge of your pocket so it sits halfway under your strap so we've pinned that side so we've got a pin here in the center there, there's our two pockets here and then we're going to um, stitch just up to that line there um, now I'm happy with with seeing that you may not be but uh, maybe you want to do some zigzag on there to keep that really neat but you know what I just wanted to use that beautiful fabric and then if we go to the other end and yeah I really do need my lovely long pins for this Got my special ones so if we come to the other end then our strap sits right over the top lovely and straight and you're just going to pin it and the, we're going to stop stitching uh, where the top of the binding is so here we're going to stop stitching here so again let's pop that over the top pop a pin in to hold it all now you might want to pin all the way down here um, I won't do that for speed I'm, I might put one or two in just to keep them absolutely dead straight you've got the lines of your quilting that you can follow that's always a good guide um, but uh, we're going to now stitch these straps in place so we're going to start stitching at the top here we're going to stitch over the existing lines that we've got our already on our straps we're going to come all the way down all the way down all the way down and up to the front across here where my pin is and then all the way down here and then across and that secures that side of the strap on and we're going to do the same on this side so um, just a repeat of what we've just done 
let's take it to the machine okay start with a nice back stitch don't forget the straps are going to be a really important part of the bag it's going to take the weight of whatever you put in it so just make sure that um, it's nice and securely uh, stitched so I'm literally going over the seam lines that I created on my straps I'm making sure that everything is sitting straight like I say you might want to put lots of pins in there to hold it I'm literally following my quilting lines to be honest so you've got lots of visuals lots of um, guides if you like so who are we coming up to this part here so like I said before I'm only going to stitch where Kath told me to which is really at the top of the uh, binding that, that, sh that she did in the pattern Okay, so I've gone across and now I'm coming down the other side. Because it's a big, big piece, I'm sweeping things off my desk. So just make sure your desk is nice and clear. <laughs> so down the other side. I'm not pushing it, I'm just trying to keep my fabric straight and flat. And if you've got a smaller machine, you might want to roll your piece so it sits nicely. way up the other side and then across the top where your the binding is of the top of the pocket on the back you can see where I am so I'm just stitching across this part here this isn't the best color to use for filming I've done a double row cut my threads so let's have a look at the front see if we can see that a little bit more clearly just one second so can you see there's my strap and that's been top stitched all the way down I've top stitched across here to secure it so that that part of my strap is is free there's my my pocket and then coming all the way down there's my center chalk line here and the seam sitting on top if we come up to the front let me turn that around come up to the front I've literally stitched exactly where Kath told me to which is here obviously I've used this fancy binding but it would alter where I put my magnetic closure so I'm keeping to the pattern so um, you can see the strap coming up here and then I've stitched across here so let's do the other side
so there is the straps installed and you see what that looks like now always looks a bit weird when we make this bag but you'll see uh, um, when it's done how effective it is um, and how pretty it is as well okay so let's move on so now we need to put our um, metallic closures in our magnetic closures in and um, we're going to do that on the front first right so, so we're just going to measure down from the top of the bag um, and mark where our magnetic closure should go and in the pattern because I've, I've just had a little check there it tells you exactly where to place that so I'm just going to mark down from the top so here I've done a cross just on the pink flower there and again from this side we're just going to do another cross here and that's where we're going to put our magnetic closures so let me just measure that again make sure I've got that in the right place didn't think I had <laughs> so let's do a bit of a better cross there we go and let's do that again yeah we're fine so now we're going to just make a hole so this time I'm just going to use my scissors so if you wanted to you could take your washer and pop that over the top now let's just make sure I'm in the right place again just you know just to be sure you really want to keep measuring and making sure so you could put your washer on there and you could mark with your chalk pen or a heat erasable pen the the lines so again on this side as well so you're getting it central to a quilted line so if you've followed the pattern you've quilted exactly the same as the pit the pattern tells you then you know where you're going to be making your marks and your, your pieces and now we're going to cut the holes so I'm just going to use my scissors to make little snips exactly where those lines are okay so let me move those off there in case they disappear so the legs go through the front so as the legs come out you can just about see them there I can put my washer over the top and then just bend the legs back and I tend to use I'll be honest I tend to use a pair of scissors for this but they they are my my sort of utilitarian scissors not my best scissors these scissors will cut anything so there's one installed they are good and then with this one again we're doing the same just make sure you've got them level right so there's our legs coming through there let's pop the washer over the top before it changes its mind <laughs> and um, just use the back of my scissors it's better flat push it down either side I mean those these legs can go in or out I tend to push them out so there is the metallic um, magnetic closures for the top of the bag so let's have a look at the instructions so according to our lovely pattern it says that we need to round off our corners again for our lining so forgive me that my lining hasn't been pressed and we'll take our measuring tool here and we're just going to put our curves in so there's one there's two so if you wanted to you could fold your fabric in half and just cut each side separately There's one cut. Let's cut the other one. Okay. So now what we're going to do is put our poppers in on this side. Now we need to put some um, stabilizer on here, and we need to give it strength. So we just cut two little pieces, just two little pieces of stabilizer, and we're going to pop it on the the front, the sorry, the back of the lining here. 
Okay, so this is the bit where you really need to concentrate on what I'm going to say next. What I want you to do is to get your outer piece, as you can see, so it's right side up, so you can see your magnetic closures. Okay, good. Now I want you to get the right side of your line. It can be the, actually it could be the wrong side, whichever side you prefer to use, um, just because you're going to mark the fabric and you're going to pay, place your um, flap, your lining flap over the top of your bag like this. So all I'm going to do is mark my fabric like that. As I said, you can do it on the wrong side because that's where we're going to put our stabilizer. So if I was to turn this around, we're going to do the same again. We can pop it over the top, make sure it's all equal that side, make sure it's sitting right under your strap handles there. Again, feel for your magnetic closure and just do a little um, dot there so you know exactly where your um, exactly where your other half of your magnetic closures are going to go. So I'm happy with that. That's that. We can put that to one side now, the outer to one side. So now we need to put our stabiliser, our little tiny squares, so about an inch square, on the wrong side of our lining fabric, okay? And all you're going to do is pop it over the top where your dot is, and if you put it centrally, you'll know exactly where it's going to go. And to be honest, I think, if I've got a pen handy, I would just use a regular pen, because this is on the inside of your lining, so you're not going to see it. And I would put a dot with just a regular pen so it doesn't iron out, so I know exactly where my magnetic clasps are going to go. And then I'm going to give that a press. Press my other bit of the lining while I'm at it. So you can see now that although I've put my interfacing on, I've still got my dots. Phew, it helps. So again, take your two washers and you're going to draw the lines that you need to make. I would use heat erasable now, but whatever, whatever you like. So we're just going to mark where our holes are going to be. So you can see very clearly on that. So pop the um, center hole over the one that you just created with the pen. Again, we can see exactly where to put it. So let's just put that to one side. Let's um, take my ironing mat out of the way. We no longer need that. And then we're just going to clip into that to make the holes to put the legs through. So again, just two little clips, just fold your fabric in half. Two tiny little clips, I'm talking about a millimetre, if that. And then you're going to put the legs through. So the legs are on the thin magnetic half and they just go from the front through to the back. So if we can find where we've clipped and they go through easy peasy, put our washer over the top and then as we did before I like to put it flat on my desk and get my utilitarian scissors but of course like I said before you could put the legs to the inside to the centre rather than to the outside because you do in all honesty you might feel those but it's so, such a small amount, yeah, you, I can, I'll let you decide. It's not going to make, unless you bend them right over, you're not going to feel them. So again, put the legs through from the front to the back. Pop that flat on your desk. And just flatten those down. But don't bend them too far, just so they're nice and flat. There we go, nicely done. Okay, so our magnetic closures are in place for our lining. So now it's the case of just putting the whole bag together. So we're going to do right sides together. So we've got our beautiful fabric we've just uh, created. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck my straps into my pockets. So they're out of the way, basically. Okay, now you're going to leave a little turning gap somewhere. So I would say perhaps on the side seam and then you're just going to pin these together and st then stitch them together. So let's just do that. So the next stage is to literally pin lining and outer together. Don't forget to at the beginning where you quilt your piece 
and to make sure that you trim that down to the size same size as the lining piece that's quite crucial so when if I hold it up you can see that they're both the same size they've both been trimmed back and uh, we've got the rounded corners and we've got right sides together and we're going to stitch all the way around leaving a turning gap um, on one side so remember where your center line is that original chalk line that I did so you're just going to go up one of those sides to leave your turning gap and if you wanted to you could leave a double pin um, start and finish so you know where that is so if I have a look here um, that's my end point just bring that in so you can see and then I'll do a double pin here so I'm leaving about a four inches because it's quite a big piece so there's my double pins there so I know that's where I'm starting that's where I'm stopping um, a double pin is always good especially if you've got different colored pins like this they really sort of stand out so we're going all the way around and then we'll bag it out and we're practically finished so let's bring the machine in so a quarter inch seam allowance to get your two pieces lined up nicely if you've tucked your straps into your pockets then you don't need to worry about them and actually um, clips would be good for this because you've got a lot of layers so just coming back to my double pins now strong back stitches there and then I'm just going to clip into my curves you might want to use your pinking shears for this very very good for curves but a few little clips should be fine <clears throat> oh that didn't stick down very well well that's okay we've still got the strength of it by the time it's pressed It'll be fine good so let's turn it through just snip those corners so just taking a little bit off you don't want to weaken them so don't get too close and we'll just turn it through so you can see it's, it's actually quite a nice easy project um, if you don't have to use the magnetic closures if you don't want to you could leave those out if you find those too difficult so just pull it through there's never an easy way to do this I suspect people will come up with lots of ideas of how it can be tackled get your hand in there and just push that out so wherever the corners are you can poke those out get your pokey tool in there nice soft knitting needle or a nice soft pokey tool you might have round those corners off with your fingers and then we need to press this and when you press it press the turning gap that we did which is just down here press that really well a quarter of an inch in um, and then when you we come to put this together now in a, well in a couple of minutes time then uh, your seam can be caught your turning gap can be caught within the side seams as you as you put it together so I'm just going to go away and press this make it absolutely gorgeous for you and then we'll stitch the whole thing together Okay, I've pressed my lovely bag um, so we've still got one piece but we've still 
got the wonderful effects of that front piece there you can just see my gorgeous binding and that's what the back looks like but obviously we need to join it together and we join it together on the sides now you can hand stitch your um, turning gap close now if you want to but what I suggest you do if we look on the overhead is to bring your bag piece up I would place my uh, magnetic closures together get that position correctly so it's sitting square bring your bag handles up so they're all sitting beautifully square on top and that has given you the bag okay that's given you the exact um, shape that you want so this is where you get your clips out because you've got to clip this together now I would suggest you try and tuck your lining in and although I'm going to clip it when I stitch it I'm going to try and tuck that lining in if you've got a fabulous lining that you want to really see and, and let it let it speak for itself which maybe you will maybe you won't um, then obviously you might want to have it on show but let's just clip it together and now this is quite thick so um, I would suggest you you test your machine and make sure that it can cope um, also um, you want to just make sure that all like I said before your turning gap has been hand stitched or you can leave it till this point where you're going to top stitch it all together and now is when you can stitch together and make your beautiful bag so you're literally just stitching these two side seams if i do it that way these two side seams are going to be stitched from top to bottom so let me just undo my magnetic clasp do my zip up which is looking gorgeous um, and so from, we're going to start from here and here uh, I would do a visual on this and make sure that it's straight so if I look at it from my point of view I might want to bring that up just a wee bit so just make sure it is straight you don't want a, a wonky uh, a wonky line there so it's, if it wasn't a quarter of an inch it was um, not far off I just adjusted that slightly Oops and if you've trimmed your wadding back this will obviously help with the layers so all we're going to do now so now obviously that sits like that over the top of your straps looks amazing so we're just going to stitch from the top down from here down to here um, do some lovely back stitches especially here to make sure it catches and just as I say be mindful of your machine to see if it will go through um, just give it a little test on maybe some scrap fabric because you've got a lot of layers going on but if you've trimmed some of that wadding back that will certainly help you so let's see what we can do I trust my Juki <laughs> So I'm just going to start just off the edge if you like. I'm going to get my pokey tool just to hold all my layers together and I'm stitching um, I wouldn't uh, let's just say um, Kath says a quarter inch away from the edge so that's what we'll do let's just tuck the lining in I'm going to see it anyway so um, you know you've, you've got to either live with it what you've chosen or you know you try to tuck that tuck it in as much as you can I mean it could be that you bind these but you're adding more fabric to your bowl so I want you to be aware of that before you think oh I can bind it <clears throat> I suppose you could bind the whole thing before you bag it out yeah actually that would be quite nice just an alternative so I'm just making sure my lining stays pretty much where I want it to be and as we come down to the bottom you're just manipulating it a little bit make sure that both edges are sitting on top of each other as I say you perhaps want to clip it clip it clip it and let's just tuck that lining in Yep, happy with that. Come down to the bottom, nice back stitches just to hold it. And there's our first side done. So if we have a look there, it's not bad at all. And then you've got the back as well. So that, uh, that's going to look gorgeous too. 
Okay, so now we're going to come up the other side and because I want to make sure that my front sits exactly where I want it to be, I'm going to actually stitch from the bottom to the top. Um, that's something that you might want to consider when you're doing this because it won't twist. It could twist if you do it the other way around, but I'll, uh, I'll take my chances and um, just move that in a little bit and uh, stitch from the bottom to the top. It should be absolutely fine. So just do a little back stitch there to hold. I'm going to take all my clips out except the one at the top because that's where we're aiming for. And I'm just going to line up my sides. Make sure you do get those lined up. Because of all the layers you might find it wants to wriggle a bit. And you know what, sometimes there comes a point where hand basting, yes needle and thread, might be the answer to getting all this absolutely gorgeously perfect if that's what you're striving for so keep those seams directly on top of each other take time over this you'll see i'm not rushing face of concentration <laughs> so I've removed my top clip now just so I can get my hands in there and then a lovely lovely back stitch to finish so it's nice and secure there we go so let's have a look at the back not too bad okay so that's our bag actually finished so there we go let me hold it up to the front that's what it looks like you can see how my lining shows I'm very happy with that you might want to use something like the gorgeous turquoise that I used on the back pocket maybe the whole thing needs to be in there I don't know I like it as it is so there is our Austin all completed and it's absolutely glorious so there's the, the back pocket there it looks beautiful it's going to take all my applique goodies for my quilt that I'm making and uh, the beautiful piece of uh, Indian uh, sort of uh, embroidery there is going to remind me of making this beautiful bag. So there we are. So there is Austin here with uh, Kath's version, which is very delicate and flowery. It's beautiful, isn't it? And then we've got my version, which is just a little bit more perhaps not masculine so much, but there's darker colours, which really... I think really suit it as well so you've got two different sorts of versions there really thank you ever so much for watching it's been an absolutely tr tr an absolute treat to do this for you and i hope you enjoy making up austin and i hope to see loads